It's 105.9 The Big Kahuna, Honolulu's only classic rock, and Dave Lawrence here with the perfect way to end our month of British rock. We've celebrated a lot of great music over the month, concluding this week-long celebration of the new DVD, The Police, Every Breath You Take, joining me to make it sort of special and talk about it, as well as the reissue of the remastered Police catalog and Every Breath You Take, The Classics. I am thrilled to welcome to the airwaves of 105.9 the incredibly talented drummer, Stuart Copeland. It's a pleasure, Stuart. Hey, Dave. Oh, shucks, thanks. But hey, wait a minute, there's a problem. What's that? This is supposed to be part of your British month? Yeah. I'm American. I know. How does that work out? <laughs> well, I lived in... England for 20 years. Both of those guys are British. They're and, Brits. Andy and They're Stanley. tea bags. <laughs> and uh, now where did you, you first hooked up with them where? In London. Actually, the first time I saw Sting, he was playing in a band in Newcastle, uh, which is northern England. So you're a Brit by association. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and how involved with these projects were you? Not hugely involved, I have to say. Not hugely. Uh, because the uh, audio enhancement is done by people other than me and all of that. Um, so I can't say that I'm hugely involved with it. It's amazing to me, and I'm full of deep, deep gratitude and humility that the music still means something today. And you, you're sort of, I guess, retouching what you've done 20 years ago by doing this recent Hall of Fame reunion show. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. How is your rapport with, with the boys? How did that develop into something that we all got to be part of? Well, it's interesting. The rapport with the other guys has been completely non-police for almost 20 years. And when I go and hang out with either of those two guys, we talk about this and politics and the kids and life and whatever, but it's never in the context of police. So there we were again after 18 years of a whole, developing a whole different kind of relationship. Suddenly we're with each other back in that old context, which was the band. And uh, it was odd at first, but by the time we hit the stage, it was great. I thought this was something that maybe had been planned for a while. Well, yeah, we had pretty much advanced that this was the year that we would be nominated for the Hall of Fame. What are we going to do about it? And, Thing called up and said, hey, let's play. Screw it. Maybe this is arrogant or something, but I mean, it didn't really seem as if there was any much of a possibility that we wouldn't get nominated or inducted. Um, so we actually, yeah, I guess we did have kind of a heads up pretty early on. Yeah, that's how I seem to recall it. A lot of people here in Honolulu want to know if there's going to be more as the police, a reunion tour possibly. Oh, I wish. I wish. We should, um, I'd love to come play Honolulu Just to, play to play a show, and, you know, <laughs> save the volcano. <laughs> It was really fun to play with those two guys. I'd love to do more shows, but I just don't think it's going to happen. It doesn't seem likely. No. Nah. Um, let's talk drummers for a moment, because I play drums. I'll tell you who my two favorite drummers of all time are if you tell me who you two, your two favorites are. Okay. Mine would be uh, John Bonham and Cozy Powell. John Bonham, without a doubt. <laughs> See, if I were to pick two, Bonham would be one of them. Hey, there we go. <laughs> There's no heavier drummer. And the other guy I would choose would be, well, I'd have to make it three, Mitch Mitchell and, and Buddy Rich. Nice. Nobody had it all together like Buddy Rich. Mitch Mitchell was, of the rock drummers, the one that actually affected me most. Okay, that's just a personal choice. Mm -hmm. But John Bonham is the heaviest drummer who ever lived. <laughs> Period. You got that right, man. There's no doubt about that. Um, Stuart, what was your first concert, man? My first concert was at the American Beach Club in Beirut, Lebanon. Man, you are so international. Yep, my daddy was in the CIA. I'm really? A diplo brat. I didn't know that. Your pop was neither there? did I until <laughs> I was eighteen. And so, who was the show there at the Beirut at the place in Beirut? The Black Knights. The Black Knights. And our look was black turtleneck with a white shirt. And about what year is this? I was twelve, um, and it was about nineteen sixty something. Wow, what a great piece of trivia that is, man. Uh, a couple more questions and I'll let you go. What was your first album that you bought, Stuart? The first album that I got was Help by the Beatles, but it was just because a friend of mine was going to England and I gave him some money and said, bring me back something, and he got me this album, Help, which I loved, actually. There you go. The first album that I bought that I'd selected and said I must have that album would be Jimi Hendrix. Unappropriate first album, especially with Mitch being... Um, it was also the first concert I saw. Was Jimmy. When I went to boarding school in England, it was Jimi Hendrix. Nice. What was the venue, do you remember? It was the Savile Theater. It was the night Brian Epstein died. Wow. A project that you do, uh, what's the future with uh, Oysterhead, right? That's the name of it? Oh, uh, we're still th already thinking about O2, but um, Trey's got to get through this fish tour. The fish guys are such great guys, you know. You know, in Vermont, each member of fish owns a county. Sure. So in Burlington, there the offices of Fish Donia. Dionysian. Dionysian. What a wonderful thing, too, because Dionysian is actually a great company full of really good people. I know Jason Colton well. His uh, his cousin is the guy who got me started in radio, Jason Stein. Oh, what do you know? Um, someone here at the station was telling me about some of the shows that you've done here in Honolulu. Do you have any particular memories of, like, coming here, hanging out on a... Uh, Oh, 
man, Hawaii was always the uh, the great stop because after Hawaii, you know, we'd play a grueling tour of North America, and then it would be Hawaii. Oh yes, we had so much fun in Hawaii. Uh, we played a stadium there. We played various different places there at different times. Well, Stuart, you got to know, bro. You got some friends here, and anytime you want to come back, we're going to be there to welcome you to the island. Whether you just want to come and hang out and swim and surf and boogie board and stuff. Yeah, I got a lot of friends there in the north north part of the island. Polo oh, cool. club up there on Oahu. Yeah. All right, one last question. I'll let you go. Finally, Stuart, uh, if you could retrace your steps over the last year. What one thing do you think that your fans are most curious about in your life that I maybe haven't asked you? What fascinating experience that you think they'd most like to hear your thoughts on very quickly? How much fun was it to play some Doors gigs? There's one. Great. It was really cool. It was a fun time? Yeah. Played about three or, I can't remember, three or four shows. It was very cool. Recordings exist of any of those? There are probably... Bootlegs out there, yeah, as a matter of fact. But a personal high for you. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Stuart Copeland of The Police can be heard on the entire Remastered Police catalog, also on the new collection Every Breath You Take, the classics, and of course on the DVD Every Breath You Take as well. That's the center of our final week here on 105.9, the Big Kahuna's Month of British Rock with American Stuart Copeland here. Hey, man, I really appreciate your time, brother. Yeah. Good to have you on, on the show here. Thanks a lot. Hi, this is Stuart Copeland, and you're listening to your radio. It's tuned to the man, Dave Lawrence.